Hi, this is Jim Starkweather, the publisher of Kitfinger Network and Aeroscale, and welcome to another Cracking the Box. As promised, but a little few days later start than normal, <laughs> I'm, I'm doing some Zvezda kits, and this is a recent uh, release we, we got in, and uh, I called it a civilian airliner, I think, when we first got it, because I didn't look at it too closely, but this is definitely a military transport, the Russian Strategic Airlifter IL-76MD. Um, they're calling this Ultimate Kit. Uh, this is brand new product in the world of modeling. Um, one uh, one forty fourth, one hundred and one forty four scale, one one forty four scale. I'm not sure what the the uh, the guys who scale and, or do these scales call that, but uh, I'd call it one forty four, I guess. But uh, you can see um, again, it's a fairly small box, not not gigantic. Um, on the side here, they got a couple of their other uh, recent releases: the uh, uh, Russian TY one hundred and sixty. Uh, T6, IL, IL, IL-62M and A321 Airbus. Well, that's of course a European plane. On the side you can see um, they include some Humbrol uh, and Zvezda paint numbers. I didn't know Zvezda made paints, but I guess they do. Uh, and some decals that are shown on the back. We've got uh, more detail about the aircraft. Um, shows, I guess, a kind of a landing gear uh, out which looks like there's no actual, like the doors reshut. Um, so that's interesting. Unless, um, I assume the plane does retract lane gear. <laughs> that would be kind of dumb if it didn't. But uh, I believe it's saying 207 parts here and the total wings, well, the actual total length is 32.5 centimeters. Let's go ahead and open her up though. And on the inside, what do we have here? The instructions, of course, with um, interesting colored stamps on the side. Looks like a, maybe an inspector stamp. And we've got the uh, the clear parts, which include the uh, under and over cockpit areas. I'm not sure what that under area for is. Maybe just visibility. Um, there's the actual see the actual just scale of the aircraft in terms of size. But we'll take a look at these parts in more detail after I them out. And another screw here with the full wing span uh, and lower section all molded in one piece. And then we have a display base, which isn't boxed or, or, or uh, wrapped, I should say. Some interesting uh, striations in the plastic here. Uh, I wonder if that would actually come through in the paint. Actually, you know, it's almost, it looks almost so cool, it's like I wouldn't want to paint it. It looks like it's marbleized plastic or something. Um, and then a couple of smaller screws here. Um, the, the landing gear wheels and uh, some other, looks like maybe attachment points. Or probably the um, underside. It looks like it's some underside. I don't know if that's weapons or, or storage. I'm not sure what's what's going on with their fuel. Uh, and then of course the the engine um, parts themselves, housings, and then the decals, which we've got some blue um, decals, and we've got these as well. Quite a few. Um, kind of some. Some nice interesting sheen to some of these. And then we have last off, we have this little cardboard piece here, which you're gonna need, I'm sure, for something. And then um the I'm not in any way way an expert on this plane, so please bear with me as a neophyte for Russian transport planes. I'm assuming this is kind of like that plane that was in what was it 2012 where they they land a big russian transport plane and they take it off from was it las vegas i believe uh, but i may be wrong maybe that was another plane another type of plane it looks it looks like it though because they had all the cars in the back storage area um so clearly right off the bat in terms of just the aircraft in general this this rear rear vertical uh tail area is just huge i mean Here's the whole front section of the plane, and you can see how big the tail is. It's just gigantic. Um, the production of the plastic looks very good. Not, yeah, um, interesting. They've obviously chosen a, a hatch here that could potentially be modeled open, I guess, um, for maybe a runway diorama. There looks like there is some, obviously, uh, intentional uh, internal detail. Uh, again, I'm not sure. There are some openings here, some some window uh, portholes there that uh, um, potentially you can see through but not really I mean so I, I guess though that the the lower bay door being open might give you a view up into that section of the plane if you were again to model it with that down on the runway um, but again in terms of production I'm not seeing any 
real, you know, call it issues. The, the panel lines look very, they're inset and they look very, uh, very fine. Um, obviously the rear uh, vertical stabilizer there um, is uh, all, you know, on one piece. So you can't uh, change that or do anything with it. Uh, and then we've got this one, which um, has some actual points that go into the hinges or the hinge of the, the um, I'm not sure what the, the correct aeronautical term is for those, but the obviously the things that are connected to the 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 uh, horizontal stabilizers here, and they're actually trying to model those um, so they are one piece and go from from this piece right into the next piece, which was a nice touch, um, considering that would potentially leave a gap there that you'd have to fill and stuff. So that's a nice little plus again. Nice panel lines here, very 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 fine for that scale. Obviously, is going to be. Uh, some of the various fuselage sections and some of those flaps on the, the larger uh, full, the full uh, wings. Um, I guess this is like a leading edge, I want to say, of one of the wings. Let's take a look at the actual main wings and see uh, the internal parts here, obviously, with uh, some of the... Uh, it's, I'm not sure what's going to... It's kind of like a weird... Uh, um, pattern here. I'm not sure uh, what that's modeled after. I mean, I know normally if there are vehicles that are brought in here, obviously those might be just like tie downs or something. That's what they're trying to represent. And again, some of the same details here with these small um, um, attachment points uh, for the, the flaps and such on molded onto these pieces. There will be some photos uh, towards the end of this, so uh, if you're looking for, you know, close-up detail of some of those parts, we can definitely show you those in the photos. A lot more useful sometimes than what I can get on camera here. And what else? We've got, again, those uh, upper and lower wing segments, and this part obviously is in, uh, three, it's in three pieces total, but uh, they molded it onto one, one sprue here. And again, I'm seeing a lot of nice uh, panel lines. These look a little bit larger to the naked eye anyways. All right, so then this piece is just a lot of uh, smaller parts. The I think this is the actual tail section, or the tail section, the, the, the tail gate, the, the gate that goes in the back. Um, I'm not sure where that is, but uh, probably past that point, I guess, maybe. And again, seeing some nice like ribbing detail in here for internal detail. Not a whole lot of uh, internal detail, but just you know, here and there, there's little little telltale things. Again, you guys are potentially built aircraft like this. We're probably going to be a lot more able to just kind of discern things from the, from seeing stuff than, than from my you know verbal verbal stuff. And, uh, here's those uh, engine housings, and those are obviously in two parts each, and they have the Intake uh, rotors here, which don't aren't see-through, or you know, obviously they don't go all the way through. Um, but you'd have to black those out probably and get the right to get the right effect. And then the uh, internal and external, or the internal inlets and the external nozzle area, or the jet, the the part where the jet stuff comes out. Yeah, I'm sorry. I should I should always want to. Okay, I'm going to do a, an aircraft, aircraft kit. I better I better go look at a diagram of an aircraft. But you know, see that's the difference. I don't want to spend all that prep time. <laughs> and you know what? I'm more than happy to have a few people in the comments section calling me a moron or whatever. It's like you know, I just I, I'm sorry. I don't have time to every become an expert on every uh, plane, vehicle, aircraft, tank, artillery piece. Uh, you know, blah 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 ship. Can't do it. Sorry, I'm smart, but I'm not that smart. Um, anyways, but <laughs> you know, you guys know what those are—the the, the the inlet and the outlet uh, thing. All right. Um, hey, at least I've actually you know been on jets and stuff. Numerous. I've flown a plane. That gives me some some credence here, or some some uh, level of, of experience. Uh, all right. Well, not a jet plane. I flew a prop plane actually, a twin engine prop plane. Okay, so, <laughs> and I'll bring a, a, a static model of it in someday, because I've actually got it at home. I, I fixed the base for it, but uh, 
I need to bring, remember to bring the plane in because I was going to set it up here on one of my uh, bookshelf stands. All right, so here's some of those, I think, I believe some mounting points on the wing. Um, at least I'm seeing something in the diagram. I guess, you know what I should have done is actually is actually look at the uh, instructions. But we'll do that after we do this and then I'll kind of be able to go, oh yeah, that's where that goes. Uh, but again, landing gear, uh, kind of limited, just little small bits here. and uh, But there are some smaller, very tiny, uh, maybe connection points and things that go along with those. And of course there are two sprues for that as well as the two sprues for the engine. All right, so we've kind of looked and then looking at the decals again a little closer and see lots of, uh, you know, don't step here markings and things in Russian, of course. Um, and the name of the plane looks like it has some kind of, uh, almost looks like a company designation. That's I think that's probably why, looking at it, I thought it was a civilian airliner because, you know, these, these designations here up on the top of the aircraft just look like something that a, a company would put. But, of course, we are dealing with, you know. Um, I'm not sure when this plane was actually um, made. Let's see, it does say first flight 1971. So this was definitely a Soviet original design and so forth. Um, main military transport craft of the USR, USSR and Russia having made the first flight in 1971. It is still, it is still not lost its importance and undergoes constantly a modernizing process. It has obtained more than 20 world records for load capacity and speed. The IL-76 is the standard plane for the Russian airborne forces and is capable of dropping the entire range of airborne vehicles. Uh, and more than 100 paratroopers. EW systems installed on board are hardy, hardly inferior to those of modern fighters. Armament consists of two 23mm guns. The IL-76 is equipped with bombing equipment and, if necessary, can take up to 20 tons of various bombs on board. So, thus, the, the, the connection weapons hard points. Um, and this transport plane is all used to use for humanitarian aid worldwide. All right, so quickly looking at the instructions, we do have a parts overlay here. Um, and quickly going into uh, kind of internal cockpit and uh, the internal section, I guess, is kind of a insert on its own. You can see some of the superstructure there, or the internal structure, and then going to the fuselage going together with the front um, glass uh, canopy, not canopy, the front cockpit glass, I guess, cockpit section. Um, and the nose cone, and there are those inlets and outlets going on with the, the, the jet engine uh, housings. And here's the landing gear going together. There's actually a gun in the back, kind of like the backfire bomber gun, which is cool. Um, and uh, showing some of those uh, leading and uh, or the front sections and the rear sections of the aircraft plane, the air, the wings, the wings. That's what I wanted to say, the wings. Sorry, it's, it's late in the day. I'm I'm I'm, I'm tired. I, I just want to go home. Actually, no, I have to stay here for several more hours. Uh, work, Jim. Work. So um, here's the uh, the landing gear. They do are just basically kind of like attached to the, the under fuselage. So I don't think there's a way to actually show them uh, in any way. Like uh, doors. I guess the doors must reconfigure. There are doors, right? I mean, it doesn't just have landing gear down all the time. I assume. Doesn't say anything about whether that's optional or not, but that's not really that surprising. Oh, I guess version one and three. There's different versions here. Um, they're saying as for assembling versions one comma three. So, anyways, um, well, they are showing obviously the aircraft here without landing gear on the bottom. So yeah, it must be retractable. It's just it's just the, the doors must go back in place and so forth. All right, uh, there are markings on the back here, or there's a a, a schematic for. Uh, de decals and so forth and they give model paint versions but there there are numbers which probably go along with the numbers on the box so you're gonna have to actually you know look at the box look at the number and figure out where all the different paint colors are going uh, then of course anybody building this that's serious at all is going to be having lots of resource and reference material to 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 get them on their way all right uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at the plastic close-up and then we'll come back and conclude
All right, well, I hope you enjoyed the photos on the Russian Strategic Airlifter by Zvezda, the IL-76MD. Um, this is definitely one of their new tool kits. You can, you know, just dial from the plastic, basically. And uh, for those of you looking for a 144 scale version of this, uh, definitely this is probably um, one of the ones you're going to be looking at. I uh, can't imagine there's a whole lot out there, especially made by Russian companies who probably had pretty good uh, close-up uh, capabilities of going in and... Uh, you know, doing some some investigations on the aircraft. That's not to say I think it's 100% accurate because I don't even know if it's 50% accurate. But the point is, is that they just would have you know the ability to do that. And being that it's a Russian plane, you know, there's some patriotic uh, you know responsibility there to get it right. So hopefully they have gotten it right. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, uh, please leave them in the comment section. And if you like this video, don't forget you can click the like button whether you're on YouTube or our websites. And uh, Please, uh, our, our thanks again to Zvezda for sending this kit along for review. It is available for a more detailed uh, build review or uh, build feature. So if you are interested in that, please give us a, a email uh, to either publisherkitmaker.net or uh, I believe Kevin Brandt is also, uh, his email is on the, the sample sheet for this. So he will be happy to talk with you or I would have, be happy to exchange emails with you if you're interested in doing a review. And thanks again for watching. We will see you next time on Cracking the Box.